Hey friends, Elizabeth here, back again with another video. And I am so excited about this week's video. I don't even know how to express myself. I don't think you'll understand how long I've wanted to have my own little free library. It's been as long as I've known that they exist. And this week I am living out my librarian dreams by wearing my librarian glasses and also by building my own little free library to have on my own land that I own. And I'm really, really excited about being able to stock it with books and share my love of reading with my neighborhood. I'm really excited to be able to learn everyone's reading preferences, what genres they like, and just share reading with everybody because y'all know I love to read. I love to talk about reading. I love to talk about books. It's the best of all the worlds. So at this point you might be saying, okay Elizabeth, I can tell you're excited. That's great and everything, but what the heck is a Little Free Library? Well, I'm gonna tell you. Little Free Library is a nonprofit organization out of the States and it all started with this goal of building community and improving access to books for everyone by removing some of the barriers to access that come along with reading like cost because books are very expensive as I'm sure you all know, and things like transportation and distance. Not everyone has a library within walking distance and not everyone has access to a vehicle or public transit. So Little Free Library is literally little free libraries that individuals and sometimes groups or schools will either build on their own or repurpose some sort of little shelter or piece of furniture or order one from the website and put out on their property stocked with books that people can take and read for free. Their whole motto is take a book, share a book. So the idea is that hopefully, even if you don't have a book to replace the one that you are borrowing right away, that you'll either return the book you borrowed once you're done reading, or if you ever come across another book, you can add a couple more into the library to help to keep it stocked, to keep the karma going. Little Free Library's mission is to have one of these little libraries in every community and to find a book for every single reader. They believe that all people are empowered when the opportunity to discover a personally relevant book to read is not limited by things like privilege, time, or space. I really love what Little Free Library stands for and I really love what they're trying to do. And like I said, I have been mildly obsessed with Little Free Libraries since I first discovered they were a thing. I don't remember exactly what year it was that I first saw one, but it was definitely while I was living in Toronto. And I always just got so excited when I would spot a Little Free Library when I was out and about. If I had the opportunity to stop and peruse the options, I would, and I would often bring books that I decided I didn't want to keep to a local little free library that was actually just down the street from where Jason and I lived in Toronto so that other people could enjoy them too. So I've decided to become a steward of my own little free library. And basically how that works is that I build and install a little free library, which I will show you in this video. And I get it started with some books and I take care of the library. I am the librarian of my own teeny tiny library all my dreams are coming true. <laughs> I make sure it's clean and maintained, make sure that people aren't shoving things in there that shouldn't be there, and just in general, helping to curate the selection of books, taking in donations from anyone in the community who might want to donate. Once I have more than enough books to fill the library, it will also be on me to swap them out from time to time, change up the selection. So people who will walk by my little free library on their way to work or school, maybe walking their dog, will have new options for books to read on a semi-regular basis. So now that I've explained how Little Free Libraries work, the concept, why I'm really excited to have my own, I want to get into the process of building our Little Free Library because we built ours from scratch, which was a whole experience. <laughs> but before I get into the build, I do want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Ana Luisa. Y'all know I love Ana Luisa. I have been working with them for years now and wearing their jewelry literally every single day for years. They are my favorite affordable and sustainable jewelry brand by far. I can personally attest that their jewelry is long-lasting, tarnish-free, and high quality. The longer necklace I'm wearing today is one of the first pieces I ever got from Ana Luisa years and years ago, and it still looks as amazing as it did on the day I got it. All of their pieces are strength and humidity tested, and because I'm lazy, and also because I have six piercings in my ears, so it takes forever to take all my earrings out, I shower with my Ana Luisa earrings in every day. And some of the earrings I own have been showered in many, many, many times over the years, and they still look 
amazing. Anna Louise's pieces are super affordable starting at just $39 so you can always find a piece that piques your interest within your budget. They offer free super quick shipping within the US and affordable shipping worldwide. It's never a risk going with Anna Louisa because every single one of their pieces is backed by a two-year warranty even though they extensively test their products against allergies, breakage, tarnishing, and damage. They stand behind their products so much that if you have an issue they will either offer a replacement or a reimbursement no question asked. Not only are Anna Louise's pieces affordable, but they are ridiculously cute. I love how dainty and timeless their pieces feel, even the ones that are a little bit more trendy or whimsical. I'm wearing a couple new pieces throughout this video. The shorter necklace I'm wearing matches these little huggies, and I'm also wearing an epic snake ring. And the third thing that makes Anna Luisa my favorite jewelry brand is their sustainability focus. All Anna Luisa pieces are crafted with the planet in mind. Not only is the entire brand carbon neutral and climate neutral certified, offsetting 100% of their carbon emissions, but they also extensively used recycled materials in their pieces, which is such an amazing way to give these materials a second life. I really love all of my new pieces, and as always, I love to layer them with pieces I already have in my collection. Thank you so much to Anna Luisa for sponsoring this video, for sending me pieces that I will wear for years to come, and for helping me to cover the costs of building and stocking my very own free little library, which I am so excited about. Elevate your everyday with pieces you'll love at prices you'll love even more. Click the link in the description box and use my discount code ELIZABETHT20 for 20% off your purchase from Ana Luisa. Thank you again to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video. So let's talk about building a little free library for a second. Disclaimer, this is not going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial for how to build your own little free library because my husband and I, while he has a lot more experience and knowledge when it comes to building things, we were both still trying to build a little free library for the first time. It was new to us. We were learning a lot as we went. We were also changing things as we went to accommodate for things not going exactly as planned. So this is not a tutorial or a step-by-step -step guide, but I will be including quite a bit of footage of us building the little free library so you can kind of see the process and see it come together. It was so satisfying to go from a pile of random materials and tools to a tiny little library on my front lawn. It feels so good. Luckily, I am married to a handy man not a handyman, but a handy man. You get it. So we were going to build something from scratch and I decided to buy the official Little Free Library plan book that they have on their website so we could figure out which one fit closest to what we wanted to do and then we could kind of modify it from there. So after spending some time looking through the book, we decided on this design as the one that was closest to what we wanted to do and also seemed like one of the simpler ones with a smaller margin for error, which we thought would be a good idea. We already had some of the tools and materials we needed at home, but we definitely needed to go on a trip to Home Depot to pick up a lot of wood <laughs> and some other things like hinges and plexiglass. Jason had a really cool idea to use some reclaimed materials in the build, which I was so on board for. Y'all know I love sustainability, so anything that is reworked like this jewelry using recycled materials, vintage, used, reclaimed, I'm on board. So we knew that all the sides of the Little Free Library were going to be covered in this old wood planking that no one wanted, so we got access to for free. And I loved the rustic, weathered look of this wood siding, and it really helped us to figure out the direction for what style we wanted the Little Free Library to be. So we started with the absolute basics, cutting materials to the right lengths or widths if we had to, planing one side of all these reclaimed boards so they would be nice and flat, so we could easily mount them to the sides of our box that would become the Little Free Library, cutting the pieces to size and doing a dry fit, basically just stacking everything up to each other and putting a couple nails or screws in it to hold it together and just make sure that everything fits, that it's square, that all the angles are right before properly putting it together. This wasn't a super long process. It took close to a full day, I would say, to get all the prep work done and to get the main pieces cut. So the roof, the shelf, the base, and all the sides. Then on day two, it was time to actually assemble everything. For the roof, we decided to go a little bit of a different direction from the plan, something that was a little bit simpler. So we just cut a piece of wood to be the roof at the proper dimensions, and we sprayed it with bed liner that you use for trucks. It gives this sort of textured effect and almost looks like the material that roof shingles are made out of. We masked a square on the interior so that the roof from the inside would just be the natural wood, but made sure that we got the underside of the roof that sort of peeks out on the sides, on the back and the front, the side edges all the way around, and then also the entire top of the roof. This makes it weather resistant, resistant 
resistant to water and also kind of looks like a roof texture. So that was Jason's idea and I thought it was a really good one. As for the door, we decided we wanted to make it out of the reclaimed wood, just like the side, so that the whole outside would sort of look like it matched. It all fit together. This was a little harder to figure out because this reclaimed wood was weathered and old. Some of the pieces were cupped or slightly warped. None of them were exactly the same. It took a little bit of finagling to get a door that was symmetrical and <laughs> all fit together properly, but we finally got it done. We also decided because we were using this reclaimed wood instead of the wood that was in the plan that was a little bit thicker, not to add the little recessed area for the plexiglass to drop into, just because the reclaimed wood was quite a bit thinner and we didn't want to impact the structural integrity of the wood. Once the basic box was built, it was time to add the reclaimed wood siding. And this was such a fun process, even though it took a lot of back and forth, planing the pieces to make sure they were flat, cutting them and adjusting them to make sure they all fit. We made sure to use both wood glue and nails and screws to make sure that everything was really secure and hopefully would last the test of time, especially in the harsh winters we get up here in the north. Jason had some magnets lying around, so we added those to the door as well, so that once it gets close to being closed, it closes itself and it keeps it closed unless someone is purposefully pulling on the handle, which is great to make sure that the very high speed winds we get up here don't blow the door open and closed and slam it and make noise and also potentially damage the little free library. Continuing on with the theme of reclaimed, reused materials for this little free library, we decided to go to a local antique store that we have in town and look through their options of random knobs and handles to find one to use for the little free library and we had a couple options. I'll show you the top two that we were down to and we ended up going with this one. I felt like it had a little bit more visual weight to it. It was a little heavier looking and I felt like that fit the materials and the scale of the little free library a little bit better. It's also a really nice size to be able to pull on the door which is great because all the magnets aren't super super strong. If a kid for example was trying to open it I wanted to make sure they would have a good size handle that they could get enough grip to be able to pull the door open resisting that magnet. At this point Point, we were getting pretty close to being finished. I should mention that through every stage of this process, we were doing sealing and waterproofing. We treated all of the wood to make sure that it would be water resistant. We also sealed every single seam, every possible gap. Everything that we used in the process was made as weatherproof as possible because this little free library is going to have to deal with rain and snow and sleet and hail and high winds and I want it to survive. <laughs> At this point, our little free library had taken shape and I can't even express to you how exciting it was to see it in its final form or almost final form. I was so proud of us because we definitely had <laughs> some hiccups, some frustrations with pieces of wood that were supposed to fit together and just would not fit together no matter what we did, tools going missing, screws being a couple millimeters too long for their intended purpose. So many things came up, but it felt so good to be done. I think one of the hardest parts of building a little free library is actually getting it to stand upright in your lawn. We had to dig a two foot hole in our front lawn and there were a lot of rocks. <laughs> small rocks, medium sized rocks, gigantic rocks, so many rocks. It took tag teaming back and forth with regular shovels and post hole makers, my husband and I taking turns and resting. Before we put the post in the hole though, I had to save both a spider and a worm from the hole because I didn't want them to get crushed. And then we brought the library out and put it on the post, installing it where it was gonna go. Once we had the little free library installed, attached to our post with these big metal brackets, we were basically done. All we had to do was add the Little Free Library plaque, which I ordered from their website and has the charter number on it, which allows me to put my Little Free Library on the map so that people who are looking for Little Free Libraries can see mine when they're using the app. And of course, the most important part, which is actually putting books in the library, which I was very excited about. So here is the Little Free Library all installed all built in all of its glory, but I just think it looks so lovely and rustic and is better than I could have even imagined. I'm just gonna take a moment to appreciate <laughs> the amazingness that is this little free library. But now it's time to take a look at my bookshelf and grab a bunch of books that I don't need to keep that I can put in my little free library. So I own a lot of books, but I'm also very sentimental and I really struggle to let go of things. So this was a bit of a challenge for me, but I really tried to evaluate my bookshelves with an objective eye and look for books that I've read and enjoyed, but don't see myself rereading. So I grabbed a couple books that fit those criteria 
criteria. Books like Noor by Nnedi Okorafor, Clara and the Sun, The Gilded Wolves. I tried to pick books from a variety of genres and that represented diverse experiences as much as possible in this first stocking of the Little Free Library. And I also had a couple books that were not on my shelves that I'd been planning to donate. They were sitting in a pile <laughs> to be donated. My husband also contributed a book. He donated one for the Little Free Library. I did end up ordering two books, both used. One was Anne of Green Gables because that is a book that I adore. And even though I technically have two copies of the first Anne of Green Gables book in this room, I didn't feel like I could get rid of either of my copies because one of them is part of a box set. And my other copy is a beautiful vintage edition that has been in my family for a while. It was a gift to my great aunt by her parents in 1938. So this belonged to my great aunt Doreen, who I spent time with growing up. She was the sister of my grandmother on my father's side. So this is very, very sentimental and obviously is not going to be going in the free little library. But I really wanted to include at least one book that would be appropriate for kids because I don't read a lot of books that are appropriate for children. I do want to also accommodate kids' interests there. So I started with something I know very well, which I feel like all Canadian Canadian children should read at some point in their lives. It's a very Canadian book and we're proud. So at this point I had a pretty good stack. I knew it wasn't going to fill the entire library, but I thought it would be okay if there were some gaps, if there was some open space, just in case anyone in the neighborhood wants to add their own books, donate a couple books and put them in there. And I kind of wanted to get it started and see what kinds of books people were grabbing, what genres, what age ranges were most popular. So I could start to sort of tailor the selection, curate, it a bit for my specific neighborhood and the people who will be using the Little Free Library. I knew I wanted to use something to indicate the books that were from the Little Free Library, especially the ones that I was specifically donating or purchasing to put in the library. So I ordered an embosser from Etsy that says from the Little Free Library on it that I'm going to use on all of the books just to make sure that people know where it came from. Unfortunately, the embosser didn't arrive in time to use it for this video, but as soon as it gets here, hopefully soon. I'm going to grab all the books that are still out there and give them a quick embossing. I'm really excited about this and I kind of want to get a second embosser to use for my own personal library because I just think they're so cool. But I didn't want to just stop there <laughs> because what am I if not extra? <laughs> Back in January, I went to my favorite paper shop in Toronto. Yes, I have a favorite paper shop <laughs> in Toronto. It's totally normal behavior. And as I perused the shop, picking up things that I really didn't need but really, really wanted, I saw a little stack of library cards and I had such an intense pang of nostalgia from going to the library at my elementary school growing up and filling out these little library cards. I think we also used them at the municipal library in the town I grew up in as well, although I'm sure now they don't use these because they probably just use a computer system, but there was always something so satisfying about having your name and the due date on your little library card slid in the little pocket in the book. When we decided for sure to go forward with the little free library project, I knew that I had to use these because they're just too cute not to. Lots of stewards of little free libraries include some form of a guest book. There's also a digital guest book through the little free library app. So I thought that instead of doing a more traditional guest book, like a little notebook or something within the library, that it would be fun to use these as little guest books for the individual books. So I can see the names of all the people who have borrowed a particular book and the general time that they borrowed them and get personal satisfaction <laughs> from the idea of so many people enjoying a book instead of it just sitting on my shelf being unread or having been read once but probably never to be read again by me. <laughs> so I bought little self-adhesive library card pockets. I'll link the ones that I got in the description box if you're looking for them. I'll also link these library cards if I can find the exact ones. But I didn't want to just stop there. I didn't want to just have a plain little pocket with a library card with the author and title on it ready for people to fill out. I thought it would be really fun to add some information to the library pocket to help people decide which book they wanted to read. Y'all know I am a fan of sharing as much information as I can when I'm recommending a book to someone else. I like to share the age demographic, the genre. I like to share as many content or trigger warnings as I can think of. I like to give an impression of the mood or the feeling of a book. So I decided to incorporate
incorporate all those things onto this little pocket by making my own little information stickers that I could stick on here. So I designed these in Canva. It took about 10 minutes. I decided to make them a little bit cute, but they just have a lot of basic information. So in the lower right hand corner, I wanted to include the charter number of the library so that anyone who borrowed a book would remember which Little Free Library they got it from. Little Free Library under that. And then just the little slogan of Little Free Library, take a book, share a book. And then information about the specific book. It's pretty self-explanatory, but just filling out this information. So if someone stops and is looking at the books when they open up the cover, they can see some of the basic info. What age is it aimed at? Is it mysterious? Is it adventurous? Is it slow paced and reflective? Or is it really tense and fast paced? And then also any major content warnings. Because y'all know I'm a big supporter of trigger and content warnings. I think they are a form of respect and care for our fellow readers. So I definitely wanted to include those on here as well. And once I had all the information written out, I could stick it onto the pocket. Then I could stick the pocket into the book and insert the little library card. And look how cute this is. I'm actually obsessed with how adorable this is. I'm so happy with it. I know it's extra, but I love it. <laughs> it was time to bring these outside. And what happened just as I was about to bring the books upstairs and out to the little free library, one of our neighbors came to our door with a huge bag full of books to donate. She saw the little free library while she was out walking her dog. So she went back home, <laughs> grabbed a bunch of books and came back. And I was just so floored. The little free library hadn't even been installed for a full day yet. I hadn't put any books out yet. And already one of my neighbors was donating a huge bag full of books. And it honestly just kind of bowled me over. I got kind of emotional just at the generosity that was already happening and that sort of sense of community and sharing that little free libraries are all about. So I was really excited about that. We ended up chatting for a while and all of a sudden I had a bunch more books to fill the library. Let me know in the comments if you think I should add the little library cards and information stickers to all the books in the little free library, including ones donated by other people, or if I should only put them on the books that I'm putting into the library that I have more knowledge about because I'm still on the fence. I know that a lot of stewards use their little free library stamps, always free, never for sale on all the books in their little free library, no matter who donates. So I suppose it makes sense for me to use my embosser on all the books once it arrives. I realize that when people donate books to a little free library, they're not expecting to get them back. So they probably don't care if I add a little sticker on the inner cover and emboss the pages. But for some reason, I feel weird about it. So let me know what your thoughts in the comments. I'm still very new to this. This was literally this morning that my neighbor came by and delivered the books and I filled up my little free library. So I'm open into any suggestions and tips and tricks y'all might have, especially any of you who might be a steward of your own little free library, please share all of your tips and tricks because I have so many more fun ideas for things I could include like bookmarks, but I'm sure any of you who have your own little free libraries have so many more ideas to share. And this brings us to the last part of this video, which is putting all the books into the little free library, stocking it for the very first time, which honestly, I didn't expect to be so emotional <laughs> about it, but I don't know why, because I'm such an emotional person. I should have known <laughs> ahead of time that I would be emotional, but I was super emotional and really excited to put all the books out. Jason came out with me so that he could also be there for the experience because he was definitely an even bigger part of making this happen than me. And he was getting really excited too to see the library slowly fill up with books. And this is what my little free library looks like. <laughs> I'm so excited about it. I think it looks so freaking adorable. I keep peeking at it from inside the house, from every window that I can see it, um, hoping to spot someone looking through the books. I haven't seen anyone looking yet. I might become a much less productive person. <laughs> as I try to spot the first person looking through the books, but I just think it looks so cute. I'm so proud of us for building it. And I'm also just really, really excited to be a steward for this little free library and to share my love of reading with my community, to continue to take in any donations people want to share. And I have plans to buy some used books to put in there as well, especially copies of some of my favorite books that I wasn't emotionally prepared <laughs> to take off my shelf, but that I really want to share with the world. Books like The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison or Breeding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer or Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. I'm just so, so excited about this. And I hope y'all enjoyed this video, watching the process of the Little Free Library coming together and seeing it stocked for the first time. I feel like the Little Free Library is my new baby and I'm very protective of it and very proud of it for existing. And I want to tell everyone about it. So 
that's this video. <laughs> Thank you for hanging out with me this week. Thank you again to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to click the link in the description box and use my discount code ElizabethT20 for 20% off your purchase from Ana Luisa. And now I'm going to get going and just sit in front of the window and watch the little free library and wait <laughs> in a totally not creepy way to hopefully spot somebody looking through the books and maybe grabbing one to take home and read. Because how exciting is that? <laughs> Leave some sort of bookish emoji in the comments if you made it all the way to the end so I know you're a real one. And with that, I'm going to get going. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll see you really soon in my next one. Bye, friends. I'm so excited. My face actually hurts from smiling. <laughs> okay, I need to go spy on the little free library so I can watch my neighbors pick up books and learn stuff about them based on their book taste. <laughs> Again, in a not creepy way. Okay, bye. <laughs>